Welcome and welcome to another edition of All Ball Chicago. I'm your co-host, Robert Bobby Reed, and I got the legend, the NBA veteran, the McDonald's All-American in the building, your host, Marcus Liberty, with me. What's up, Marcus? But then we got a special guest, one of his What's teammates up? from 1987, the McDonald's All-American game, Louisville legend. Drafted first round in the NBA with the Washington Bullets. Give it up for LeBradford Smith in the building. What's up, LeBradford? Hey, what's going on? How, how's everybody? Man, man good. good, man. Glad to have you on, man. Glad to have you on. I appreciate it. All right, we're going to get straight to it, man. I, I want to ask you this since the last dance was on. It, it, Marcus uh, said he could get uh, to. I want to just, because people want to know, right? And it's a fun story, right? Uh -huh. And you was cold to me, so no, there's nothing you know malicious about it. But Michael liked to have a fun with that story that you guys played against, right? Yeah. Yeah, see, I mean, yeah. He wasn't having fun that first, that first night. He was a little, he was a little ticked off. But uh, the second night, I get to the arena, you know, do my little routine. And I come out, and I normally come out early, shoot around. And uh, Rodney McCray and B.J. Armstrong was like, hey, L.A., uh, I hope you got your rest last night. <laughs> well, what you talking about, man? He said, hey, Mike been here since about four. He wow. told us, he told us, uh, yeah, I'll take the night off. Just give me the ball. Wow. And uh, I was like, damn, all right, let's lace them up. <laughs> right. But I was I was mad at my team because every time down the floor, you know, he going at me and we come down, we running our offense. I'm I'm the third option, third, fourth option. <laughs> So he's shooting the ball 12 times in my one. Wow. Oh, man. He, well, he's going to get the edge, right? right? Yeah, that's what I'm saying. So, right. you know, it, it is what it is. I know Good it was question. fun, man, for that to come up. I know you was you had fun with it with your family and stuff. So I just wanted to ask that, get that out the way, because the last dance was good, right? Yeah, I, I thought so. Uh, I, I think it's uh, – oh, I think it's uh, – uh, people don't realize the hard work that goes into making it to that level. And even when you get to that level, how to stay there. And they think, you know, we just woke up one day and was talented. Right. So I think the last dance showed a lot of the other side. It's not all money and, no. and, and fame. <laughs> it's a lot of, it's a lot of hard work. To put it lightly. <laughs> yes, exactly. Mike, Michael was not just hard working, man. That dude was rough, right? Exactly. He wanted to be the best, so. Yeah, Mike was, uh, he was different, man. But L.A., you know you was a bad dude, man. And, and, and you know, I always, I always respected your game, man. I, even though I know me and you came out, we all came out the same uh, year, me, you, Higgins. Uh, we waiting on Higgins. He said he got the wrong email. I had the wrong email, I guess, on so I'm waiting mm -hmm. on him. But uh, I mean, that '87 was a uh, was a mug, man. Tell yeah. me some of your your memories, man, of back in '80. You know, '87. You know, from from oh. the camps, from the camps to to you know, you doing your thing in Texas and 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 all the way up to you know college. Well, you know. Uh, in Texas, we couldn't, I couldn't go to five star Nike. Wow. So I just, I heard about all of y'all, but I've never, I mean, I had never played against or play with any of y'all. And, uh, you know, we was able to go to like, uh, some BC, BCI shootout in Boston and, uh, we went somewhere else. We was only able to play in two tournaments. But I couldn't – if I'd have went to a Nike or, what was that, five-star, mm -hmm. I would have I would have lost my eligibility to play varsity basketball. You know, they wanted you in spring training playing football down there in Texas, man. Oh. But, uh, you 
but uh so you played did you play uh football too yeah oh see i didn't know that played wow. football got drafted in baseball out of high school i bet you was a pitcher yep <laughs> <laughs> yep i could tell man you had that 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 look you know that pitcher look you know mm -hmm. you know and 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 um so but it was between you and LJ, right? Uh, to get, or did y'all share Mr. Basketball in the state? Uh, I have no clue. I, th I we may have shared it. I may have won. I don't know. But yeah, you know. I think it, I was. We was trying to get uh, LJ Larry on too, man. But uh, yeah, I tried to. I tried to uh, numbers on him. I guess. I tried to get some numbers and and reach out to him, but no one ever called me back. So right. I mean, with all this stuff, what you think about with all this stuff going on right now, man, um, with the uh, cops brutality and and things that you've been, you know, seeing and reading and hearing about? Uh, it's it's horrible, but it's even more disturbing when you have a, your 10-year-old son or daughter that you got to sit down and say, hey, listen, for some reason, if we get pulled over by the cops, you make sure you have your hands on the back of the seat or on the dashboard. And mm -hmm. they're looking at you like, why, daddy? You know, <laughs> we might not make it home. And that's a tough conversation to have with a fourth or fifth grader. Right. Wow. Yeah, that's crazy. You know. Wow. Yeah. You know, I would... I have a I have a daughter too, man. And my, you know, my and it's and it kind of hurt me a little bit because, you know, I'm hearing it from a, a woman. You know, my mm -hmm. my child, she's twenty twenty four years old, and she's talking about dad. I'm going to get a a, a weapon. You know, she's like dad. I, I got to protect you know myself. So she mm -hmm. she's on that level now, thinking like. I can't have nobody, you know, harming my family, you know, her, her family, you know, and, and I don't know what to say, you know, I'm like, yeah, go get it or, or, or no, you go know, get it, you know, so, so she, she's got her own mind made up. She's going to definitely, you know, do that. Um, but, you know, and I have to do the same thing, you know, cause I'm looking at it like, ah, oh, man, I don't know what's about to happen. Yeah. It's it's funny because uh, I do need I do think we all need to come together. Mm -hmm. I think we all need to come together and figure this out, man. Yes. And, um, and, and and make it work for you know, for us you know specifically us you know, uh -huh. um, I, because it's been going on for a very long time and and it seems like we'll 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 get it going for a little bit and then it'll you know go away or what have you. I don't know if we not as focused when it when it when they when when stuff happens like they go to prison or whatever happens mm -hmm. um i think we need to continue you know uh the protest until we get laws changed yes we we uh we have to and uh my son he's in he's in baltimore uh he's 21 and uh he called me crying and i'm like uh oh what happened? You, you get, I thought he had got his girlfriend pregnant or something. I'm like, oh <laughs> man, what did happen? He's like, Dad. <laughs> In the last two weeks, I've been pulled over five times, and the first thing they asked me is, "Who car are you in?" He said, "It's mine." And uh, then he was like, you know, he showed them their license and registration, and uh, and then they say, "Oh, sorry, uh, we thought, you know." it's been some break-ins in this area and you know we're we're just checking everybody out he said that happened to him five times in two weeks man that's the script that's the wow. script. can i hop in real quick though yeah. yes sir you know um the crazy part about it is gentlemen is that you know we've been in this for what four or five hundred years so you know it's like our government is not trying to change so what we definitely have to do is educate our kids but I, I didn't want to stay on that topic too long because I wanted to talk to Luke Bradford about playing at Louisville. How did that feel, Liv? Can I ask him that, though? How, how was that, man, going there, going over there, killing Dominate? I just wanted to switch on that right quick. Uh, it was great. You know, 
back back then in Louisville, you know, we had big guards. You know, we got up and down the floor. You know, we like to add a uh, alley oop, high fives, until you know, till we played Illinois. <laughs> <laughs> Y'all was taking turns. Yeah, nah, but that was a good game, man. That was. That was. Uh, Talk about that, fellas. Let me hear it, Lit. No, I mean it was a, uh, it was a, like he said, it was a great game, man, and. Uh, and I, I'm going to talk about Louisville a little bit, and then I'll jump into it, man, because mm. I remember watching Louisville when I was a shorty. And, and, and LeBraffitt, LeBraff, L.A. Fitz, he fits right into what they used to do, right? Like right. they liked the big guards. They always threw them lobs. They always, you know, they, Louisville was known for always having big guards. Uh, and, and, it, and it didn't change, you know. Denny... Denny Crumbs is one of those coaches, man, that 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 I think loved the big guards. He loved athletic wings. Uh, of course, he had never nervous Purvis, you know, mm-hmm. down there. Right. And, and when we played them, man, we was looking like, damn. <laughs> <laughs> we, we got Louisville. He's seven foot. Uh, <laughs> we don't have nobody that's seven foot. Then two of our best players got hurt. We were like, oh, sh- <laughs> Yeah. Shit. And, uh, next man up, you know. So I was one of the next people up, you know, on that. And then we like, man, let's lace it up and just play, you know. Uh, Bradford and Steve Bardo was going at it, you know, back and forth. You know, Kenny Payne was going at it. I mean, it was just a great game, man. I game. think that Louisville game really like showed us that we can play with just about anybody. Yeah. That was pros though. All y'all yeah. played pro style, and I, I know that was at the level. Go ahead, Bradford. I'm sorry. Yeah, I just wish we could have. Uh... We could have met in the final four. Uh, that game was, I mean, it was just back and forth. I mean, it was just one mistake could could cost you the, the game. I thought we should have yeah. pressed y'all from the jump because we was right. about left deep. Yeah. And we should have <laughs> pressed y'all from, you know, but Coach Crumb, like, you know, he's he's won so, with that so why style. Why you, guys didn't, why, why you guys didn't do it? Oh, that's why. You know, he, he, he didn't want to press? Know, coach, he didn't – I thought we should have – you know, we would do a 2-2-1 press just to – but I thought we should have sped the game up on y'all because y'all wasn't – after – I think uh, who else was – who else was coming off the bench for y'all? We had we had uh, Larry Smith and Irvin, Irvin Small. Uh, so we went – we went – we went about eight – Seven, eight deep, and that was that was. And you said you guys went how many deep? Eleven. We was about we was about eleven. 11. The, the, the the starting five was, excuse me, uh, me, Keith Williams, Purvis, Tony Kimbrough, and Kenny Payne. Then you remember Felton Spencer. Yeah. You remember Cornelius Holden. Yeah. Everick Sullivan. I know you remember your boy Jerome Harmon, Boo Brewer. I mean, we, we he was y'all was we loaded. Were deep. Yeah, we were deep. He let him off the hook. Uh, no, they had no. We didn't let you him. You know they what? Though, the Bradford that one, he took it. He took that. Yeah, he yeah. Took, I mean, it was a great yeah, game. That would have I mean, could... been good if he would have pressed though, because I. Uh, just because it could have probably wore us out, like you said, because you know, even though we were we were athletic, but mm-hmm. if you press like that and, and we we only like seven seven eight deep, yeah, you you guys could have pretty much got us tired a little bit. I got y'all in foul trouble. Right, right. Wow, but yeah, that's classic, man. That's yeah, classic. Talk about that McDonald game y'all played in, fellas. I, I I know I'm all over the place, but I'm a fan of you guys, so. I'm speaking about it's a fan. I was McDonald's All Americans 1987, man. I, was, I wish I could have been there. It was a it was a reality check for me, uh, you know, because I came in and uh, we go to the first practice, so we warming up, you know. Next thing you know, somebody go up there, boom, dunk. <laughs> You know, go up there, tap the glass backwards, boom, and then uh, everybody was up there, boom, boom, boom. I said, oh, my God. Oh, my God. Then uh, Lib and uh, D. Scott, I, I had never seen – I have never played against someone that with that height 
and with the skills they had and could shoot the ball. I was like, wow. And then I got hurt. I got hurt, uh, twisted my ankle. And uh, I missed the dunk contest, missed the dunk contest. And then I told that dude, man, I don't care what you do. I'm playing in this game. <laughs> you can you can put a boot on there, but I'm getting in this game. Man. <laughs> I worked too hard to be all Americans. Right. But it was great to to talk to these guys, hang out with them. It was a great week. What was yeah. it in Philadelphia, wasn't it? Yep. Yep. Y'all was down there for a week. Yeah. Oh yeah. That's sweet right there. Yeah, it was it was nice, man. And and I say this all the time, man, and I think back then it was 25. I think they select 24 now, but when we were playing, it was selected 25. And I always tell people this. I say, 25 guys being selected, being a McDonald's All-American, man, that's special. 25 out of millions of people, man. And so I would never, ever, you know, take that for granted, man, that being selected as one of those 25 players to represent not only, you know, the country, but you representing your city, your state, you know, and and, and getting the opportunity to play in Philadelphia, man, uh, it, it was it was real special to me, you know, because, you know, by my name being, last name being Liberty and then going out taking pictures with Liberty Bell and, you know. That was huge, man. Yeah, hey, you ain't hey. even tell me that. Hey, he's being modest. He was the number one player coming out. <laughs> That's why he's trying to say it because his last name was Liberty. You know what I'm saying? Oh, all right, oh man. man. Okay, I see. But, but, now, huh? but, 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 but L.A., you know, I always been like that, man. I ain't never. I was never one of those type of players that talk a lot of trash, man. I just love playing the game. Mm-hmm. I mean, I just wanted to show up. I always wanted to try to put on a show, you know, like, and I know you did, and I know Higgins did, and, and D. Scott, all those guys that played with us were the same way. But we always kicked it, you know, afterwards, you know, like, mm -hmm. that's why I wish we could have got D. Scott on, man, with that go-go music, because he was big on that go-go <laughs> music, man. Yeah. My man, Hig, he, Hig got a lot of stories, man, to, to tell, but, you know, we could There come, you know, there come, hey, yeah. look, we got Le Bradford. This, yeah. this is huge. Because I was, like I say, I was a guard, so I was like uh -huh. him. Like, I wanted you to win. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah. Bradford, let's talk about let's talk about like, what was your like your 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 game like? Was it more so uh, what you see now, or was it still back old school mid range, one dribble, two dribble, pull ups, or get into the rack if you can on certain times? What was your game like? Well, uh, my my high school coach was a. He played the game for a long time, and uh, he always, always just wanted to, you know, run up and down. He was like, you know, the great teams are not going to let you do that. So you're going to have to uh, learn how to play a half court. You're going to have to learn how uh, – you're going to have to develop in a ha to have a half court game if you want to go far. Well, you know, in high school – I mean, you probably would have averaged another 15 points if the three-point line was there. You know, hey. it wasn't there until our first year in college. of uh, college. So then, you know, I got used to overpowering guards uh, in college because I was just bigger, stronger, you was bigger. more you athletic. Was cocky. Yeah. And uh, – but when I got into the league, I never forget. Uh, uh, I went, I went to back door, and I dunked one against Detroit, and then somebody got fouled a couple of times down the floor, and Joe Dumars came up on side of me and he said, "Hey, hey, young fella, I love your game at Louisville, but if you keep going, trying to dunk the ball in the paint," he said. Rick Mahorn them was going to put you on your back and hurt you. And and Isaiah was like, yeah. He said, you better start shooting that in-between game. And then, I, you know, I really started working on my in-between game after that. You know what I want to ask you, L L.A.? Uh, you know one of mm -hmm. my, my role models were uh, 
one of my role models were uh, was uh, Bernard King, and I know you played with Bernard King. How how was Bernard King, man? A uh, machine. <laughs> uh, I'm just. I was a. I was a rookie. And he he uh, he was coming back with an injury and all of that stuff, right? So we in training camp. Now this is my second year. We was in training camp. And, dude, we are on every line drill, he was first. After practice, we had to run a mile and a half, <laughs> a mile and a half uh, after practice under time. Uh -huh. I, I tried my I, – I had to push it so he wouldn't lap. What? So he wouldn't wow. lap me. And for some reason, that little ugly shot of his be – was falling because, <laughs> because uh, we was at, I was on it was it was my rookie I was on the second string and man we would come down boom every time I would be K you know he he hit like three or four in a row I wasn't going to another play oh, he was going to work <laughs> man this hey that was most uh, one of the most amazing things I've seen in a while. He's he's a machine. I see why his body breaks down because he goes hard. I mean, wow. hard every time. Man, it ain't man. no. That's uh -huh. crazy you say that, man. Because when I was little, I used to watch the Knicks, right? And my father used to sit us down, and I'm like, man, who is that number thirty, right? So I'm watching him give buckets, buckets, buckets. So guess what? <laughs> When it was time for me to pick my basketball number, I picked number 30 just because of him. Oh, wow. Just because of him. Wow. Hickam Higgins. He had that nasty in-between game, though. Oh, yeah. yeah. But talk about that transition from the NBA to college, from NBA to college. Hold on, we got Sean Higgins. Once he get his, uh, his mic. But that transition from college to the pros, people don't realize. Uh, I, ask, I always ask people this, uh, LeBrad. Playing in the college, people think they cold, and then they think the 12th man on the bench is a bust in the NBA. Can you talk about that real quick? I always like to ask the NBA guy that. Well, you know, um, 1 to 12, 1 to 15 in the NBA, it's, you know, it's uh, all of us was stars in, in college or a part of being the main person. You know, when when you get, it's a, it's a pool of stars. And and it all so goes to you know if you give Marcus of anybody you know eighteenth twenty shots a game he's gonna score he's gonna be a superstar Period. it's about getting the time if you can get if you can get the time nine times out of ten you can you can you could have a pretty good average right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's what it all boils down to. Give it up for Sean Higgins in the building. Can you hear his big up, fella? Man? What's, What's up, happening? big fella? What's going on, man? I'm Robert Reed. What's nice up? to meet you, man. Oh, likewise. Man, hey, I watched your career, man. You know, I, I just wish I could have been y'all, man. McDonald's <laughs> All-Americans, man. Free McDonald's for 1987, baby. Nah, thanks you thanks for that. coming on All Ball. What's here, up, here? What's up, Liv, man? I, I tried to get on earlier, but the link was in my spam, man. Oh, okay, oh, wow. okay, okay. Yeah. All right. It's all good. You here now? What's, yeah, what's up, head? Brother? What's up, my man? Oh, I can't call it, man. Good to see you. It's been a long time, brother. I know it. Uh, I can finally admit I stole one of your dunks, man. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> huh? Which one you get? Uh, you know how how Jordan would rock it. Yep. Yeah, he used he to do that all the time. He <laughs> come up under. Yeah, I, uh, I had to. You know, after McDonald's game, I had to come back and steal that one. Hey, 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 hey. I, stole that, I stole that from Larry Nance. Wow. <laughs> okay. But Hig, you was Hig, you was smooth with it though. You rock that mug yes. real quick and then like walk by, it, go by it a little bit and then boop. boom. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, so Hig, we just up here reminiscing, man, talking about some of, you know, the old days, man. Yeah, I've been listening. And I know you, you, you're you originally from Michigan, you know, but you, you you did your thing out there in Cali in high school. Uh, talk about some of those Cali, you know, 
uh, battles that you guys had at Fairfax, man, and, and the things that you were doing out there, you know, because you was representing that whole West Coast, you know, back in 87. Well, man, they had a lot of guys back then in Southern Cal. Man, they had John Williams that was before us. Um, they had a guy by the name of Chris Sanders that played at UTEP, RIP to him. Um, you had Scott Williams, Brian Williams, Stevie Thompson. Uh, man, you go down the list of guys, man, it was loaded on the West Coast back then, man. And so, you know, you know, I always saw – I saw John Williams playing the McDonald's game and giving to Chris Washburn at Poly Pavilion, man. And he was the king of the city, so I always said I wanted to be the king of L.A. like he was. So, you know, that's how that all started with me, man. Well, and Hig, you used to play – like, I know you used to play with a lot of pros back when you were coming up in high school, like – because California was so big, man. You can you got a chance to play with Magic against Magic in high school. Uh, tell us, tell us some, of, tell our viewers some of, some of the things you did, man. Like playing against those type of players growing up. Man, I remember the first time I met Magic. Man, we was uh, we went up to Beverly Hills High School. Man, they used to rent the gym, the Lakers, and work out up there. And man, remember Jason Matthews who played at Pittsburgh? Uh huh. Yeah, me and, me and Vincent Matthews, we went up there to play, man. We was in the ninth grade going to the 10th. And I just got back from Nike camp. Me and Dennis Scott was the two youngest guys that go to Nike camp at 13 wow. years old. What? And yeah, man. And I and I got back to LA from Nike camp. I went up to Beverly Hills High School and the Lakers was up there playing. And uh, they didn't have enough guys. So so Magic asked me if I wanted to play because I was tall. I was six seven, so he didn't know. He thought I was a college kid. So Norm Nixon was guarding me, man. Norm Nixon was good. I was shooting turnaround jumpers on Norm Nixon at 13. <laughs> and, 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 and after the game, after the game, I was so young, man. I was so hyped to see Magic Johnson. I asked Magic for his shoes. And he said, he said, what college you go to? I said, I'm in the ninth grade, man. He couldn't believe it. He was tripping. He told Norm Nick, said, yo, Norm, you fell only in the ninth grade. <laughs> and so, so after that, he just started, Magic just started letting me hoop with him every summer. That's love, That's love. there. Yeah, that is love. That's that love, is. there. Wow. That's love, wow. man. So, so we got, we got LeBron. Yeah, just put around on him. We got LeBron uh, on. Can you talk? Can you hear LeBron? Yeah, I can hear. Okay, you had to go inside, huh? You got to get out that 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 riot way, huh? Might have the mosquitoes. <laughs> That's Kentucky. The mosquitoes, they got the mosquitoes, man. <laughs> <laughs> hey, hey, they got mosquitoes bigger than drones out there, baby. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man. But so, but he so now. You know, you man, y'all had a squad though, man. It was you, uh, Chris Mills on the same high school team, man, and y'all both were kind of similar. I think your handles was a little, little better than his, but it, I think y'all both had that flame, you know, that jumper, man. Uh, how did y'all well, coexist? You know, well, Chris was my little brother, man. I recruited Chris. Chris was gonna go to uh, Crenshaw at first, oh. and what happened with me? Yeah, man. What happened with me is that my 10th grade year, my whole team was seniors. And we won the city championship in 3A my senior year. I mean, my sophomore year. And everybody graduated, so I, I was going to be stuck with a bunch of JV dudes. And so I went out and recruited Chris. I recruited J.D. Green. I, I got J.D. to transfer from uh, his school. And then Chris was going from the, coming from junior high school. So I got Chris to come to Fairfax. I begged this daddy man i used to ride my 10th grade over his daddy house and beg his daddy to let him come play with me i told him i said man i got scouts coming to my school he's gonna get seen so he ended up moving into my building and so i, I used to I, chris when i first met chris chris didn't really want to play basketball he used to play but you know chris chris is in the bikes and, and and uh skateboards and stuff like that like chris like cars now he fixed up cars and uh classics and so that's what he was into. But I got Chris wow. into basketball like serious, man. Got him real serious about it. And his game just got better. Chris used to be a real athletic guy. And then hanging with me, man, he worked on his skill. Wow. That's huge. Man. Yeah, and we um we we did talk a little bit about this, Hig, about the riding, man. What you, you 
what's your what's your take on that, man? Like uh, we we asked LeBradford already, but what's your take on that? Well, man, that George Floyd situation, man, tore me apart, man. I watched it happen on TV, man. When I saw that, you know, it it, it, it ate me up to the core, man. And and it, enough is enough. And and the rioting and all that stuff, you know, is not the answer. You know, peaceful protests are fine, but you know, hurt innocent people. I don't agree with that. But at the same time, George Floyd was innocent too. Right. And, and, and Eric Gardner was innocent. Trayvon Martin was innocent. We can go down the list, man. You know, I've been posting stuff on social media because, you know, I'm hurt. I'm hurt by it, man. I, I've been trying to do everything to keep my mind off of it. But, you know, something's going to have to give, man. And, you know, the current president, of, the current administration that we have, you know, we got to get rid of them, period. Yeah, I, I I I agree with you, man. And it 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 hurt. I think it hurt all of us, man. Like all four of us that's on here to, tonight, that to see you know an innocent man just on the ground, man, telling them, telling him, screaming, "I can't breathe," and then you keep your, your you know your knee on his neck, and 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 then we watching him like basically pass right in front of our own eyes, man. And then like you said, the Bradford spent, uh, said it earlier that we have you know. Uh, Family, I have a daughter, you know, and 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 they watched it, and and grandkids watched it, and I remember, man, and when I was with the Nuggets, and I never really shared this story, man. My brother was living, you know, with me in in Denver. He had a job. I was going to pick him up, but I was, you know, driving, you know, nice speed, going to pick him up, and I zoomed in front of this old lady and kind of gave her the finger because she was going, she was going slow. I didn't pay no attention to it after that. I'm I'm parked, about to pick my brother up. About six unmarked police cars come up with weapons drawn, telling me, you know, on the loudspeaker, get out the car with your hands up, you know. And I'm I got my music, so I'm I can't hear. I got my music playing, so I still was jamming, so I didn't know what was going on. I looked out my rearview mirror, man. They got the weapons drawn. I had to like literally just put my hands out the you know the window so they won't no shoots. So this can you just imagine if I was just like in the move throwing my hands up like this like I had a gun or something and I'm waving it, they would have shot me, man. I would yeah. I probably would not been here today, man. So, so I I take this stuff seriously, man. When when, when these, with this this police brutality, man, it's crazy. Yeah, it is, man, and and, and it's it's almost like you know like LeBron James said, we being hunted. It's like. If you get a badge, you got a license to kill a black man in America or a black woman or a black child. And, you know, so it, it's got to stop, man. I mean, you know, we, we, we deserve to be here just like anybody else. I'm not going to get deep into the politics and right. the history lesson right now, which I could do that because I'm thorough. Go there, man. Go there, big fella. <laughs> Go there, man. You know, it, it's crazy, man, because, you know, at the end of the day, you go back 400 years, man, we brought this country against our will. And, and, and now they act like they don't want us here. We're not going anywhere, period. So, you know, they're going to have to get used to us and, and, and get used to equality. They're going to have to get used to having to work just as hard as anybody else. And because and, things are getting ready to shift. And I think that's what this is all about, man, a power shift. You know, numbers, man, it, it, numbers are power. And, you know, the, the minority is becoming the majority. I know I saw a statistic, they were saying something like by 2050, that um, that the black and brown would be the majority in America. Mm. And let me hop in there real quick, uh, uh, Sean. You know, the ironic part about it, it wasn't like when our parents came around and they were fighting for the same thing. Now, the faces have changed. You see all races out there pulling for us, man. So, you know, I want to give a shout out to, you know, all the Caucasians and ethnic, you know, Asian people that's out there fighting for our cause, man, because we didn't have that in the 60s. And you you guys are sacrificing a lot. No doubt about it, man. And, and, and if you look at that, what you just said, this young generation, they don't they don't see the racial tension that we saw when we came up. I'm glad you said that, man. They bullies, they right? They love each yeah. other more than... I mean, you, it's, it's a total different society, man. And so they don't have a grasp of that fabric that we came up under with our parents, our grandparents coming up through the civil rights movement. These kids nowadays, you know, they grow up with these devices, hip hop, social media, you know, they this stuff is foreign to them. So all right. they know how to do is just lash out anger when they see something crazy like this instead of using this weapon. 
right. it's the weapon we got to use, man, because you're not going to get anything done. Violence is, in, they, they're inciting violence. They want you to fight. So they can right. kill you. You, you, yeah. you. you can't fight against them, man. They outweigh, they, out, they, they outnumber us right now, and they got weapons. They got the military. You stupid if you out there trying to fight these people. Mm -hmm. You're right. Nice. But one thing about the young people today, and um, I would say a shout out to them, they have a more cultural balance than all of us do. I don't know about your high school, but I went to Simeon, and there was only white people there was teachers. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, we had we were culturally diverse in my school. We had black, white, Asian, Hispanics. We had everything in my high school, man. So, you know, it, it was a lot of diversity. I mean, a lot of diversity. Um, excuse me, um, at our high school, man. But you know, one thing about that that caused a lot of violence. You know, in my high school, we got busted for high school. Fairfax used to be a school with just Jewish kids, and then they started doing zoning, and we they bust us from the neighborhood up there. And every year I was at Fairfax, 10th, 11th, 12th grade year, somebody got killed at my high school. I remember the day. Damn. You know, that, yeah, man. I remember because we did a lot of gang activity back in the 80s in L.A. And and so I remember when Ben Wilson passed away, my, my high school coach came and got me out of my out of my class, man, to give me the news, man, because I came back from night camp talking about Ben Wilson, how cold he was. Wow. And, uh, and, and right that same week, uh, when Ben passed away, somebody got shot at my high school too on some gang activity. That's crazy. Mm, mm, mm. What about your high school, LeBradford? Was it mixed? Uh, yeah, it was uh, black, white, and Mexican. Okay, so I That's guess good. I'm the only. I'm guess I'm the only one that didn't have that. I didn't know. See me, I didn't have that either. Ben, what do you mean? <laughs> man, you from Chicago. So CPD? I mean, CPD. CPD. <laughs> <laughs> what are you thinking about? <laughs> hey, man, CPD got their hands full. Shout out to them, man. You know what? I just want to say shout out to all the police that's fighting the real fight out there, man, because uh, not all of y'all are bad. Time, man. And please do not walk off y'all damn jobs. We need y'all right now. I'm just saying, fellas. <laughs> If they walk off their job, we're in trouble, baby. So, hey, man, but you know what? Chicago is my favorite city in, the, in America, man. I love Chicago. That's what's out of, up. All, out, of, out of all the cities I go, I, I said in the spring and summer. Now, y'all can have uh, Chicago in the winter. The winter, right. <laughs> yeah, I was about to say. <laughs> but, but, Cali but, in, boy. But, but in the summer, in the summer and the spring, Chicago cold. I love Chicago. Yeah, yeah. Hey, that's real talk, boy. Best so food you can find. So yeah, let's talk. Yeah, let's, let's talk a little bit about the NBA now. Well, well, we can go to college first. And I'm not talking about our careers or anything. Just talk about like the setup of college basketball when you know they came out with that that scam about you know athletes being paid and and Nike you know paying or Adidas paying and they they recording this. I, have y'all watched that uh, documentary the scheme? Yes. Yeah. I didn't see it. You ain't you seen gotta it. Watch it yeah. Uh -huh. yeah, yeah, you gotta watch it. it. Yeah, it's pretty it's pretty deep, man. You gotta check it out. So what do what do you What's guys think about that? Scheme. Okay. Yeah, check it out though when you get a chance though, Hig. Um, All right. you know, but but what do you guys think about, you know, I'm now they, uh, this in California, Hig now, they talking about, you know, athletes can get paid for their names, you know, you know, sake now. Uh, and I think California 2023 live. Yeah. So what do you think about that here? I think it's a good thing, man, because the schools are profiting from these athletes. They likeness and their names, man, they get paid for it. So, you know, you, you go to school to set yourself up to make a good living. And so, you know, I remember when I came out of school, when I was at, at, at Michigan, man, they had a, a, a law school student that came out. And he got a job in a law firm making a hundred thousand. They made a big deal about it because he was the first kid to come straight out of law school to make six figures. And I'm like, they making that per hmm. month in the NBA. And so, you know, you didn't say anything about this kid coming out and making money. So it's the same difference in terms of student athletes. I mean, you won't even let them work. You'll let a normal student work, but you won't let a student athlete work. So, you know, how, how are you supposed to eat? How are you supposed to take care of yourself? That Pell Grant not going to last you the whole the whole semester. And so mm -hmm. you got to pay the players, man. It, 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 you have to. You got to give them something. I'm not saying you got to pay them like pros, 
but you got to give them something, man. You got to give them a car with some with some with some money on it, something. I don't know how to do it, but something has to give, man. The players are gonna start going to the G League. They're gonna start going overseas, and the college games gonna get watered down. Hey, Sean, I want to hop in real quick, Liv. Though you got the average college coach making five million dollars a year. Come on, exactly. dog. I mean, you give a, you give the player a million of that. You got only ten players. What's that? A hundred grand a piece for the season? Come I on, mean, man. you know, right, what, whatever it's gonna be, whatever it's gonna be, man. You got to. Mm. It, it's just too much money on the table now. Back when we played, the money was big and it was all relevant. Right. You know, and I, I mean, it was all relevant. Back all when y'all we went to high majors, bro. Yeah, yeah, and, and, and they and, was making a billy off of that stuff. And, and, and that's why you see all the cheating and all the people getting in trouble because the rules. I mean, it's highway robbery, man. That's all it really is. I'm going to speak on it. And, you know, I, I, I'm not one of these guys that try to be PC, you know, and, and stand behind, you know, being a coward when things are not right. And, and there's a lot of guys, the former players, that are scared to speak their mind because they're still looking for jobs. I'm not looking for a job. Mm. That's my right. man, my right. man, Sean Higgins in the building, baby. So, LeBron, what's what's your what's your take on that? Yes, I definitely think uh, players should be uh, getting some kind of compensation, or that's just like uh, the Heisman Trophy winner here, right? Uh, Lamar Jackson, right? Mm-hmm. Okay, they said, well, you know, you couldn't find his jersey nowhere in the state of Kentucky. Uh, you uh, can't even find a, a toddler. As fast as they were making them, they were gone. And then his mom can't even come to a bowl game. <laughs> wow. now, that's, that's cruel, ex, man. Ex, ex, ex. That's crazy now, right there. So, so, but then they said, then they said, uh, well, we'll take his name off of the back. Well, everybody in the state of Kentucky knows who's number eight is. You don't have to put it. That's like putting 23 on a Chicago Bulls jersey. Everybody in the world knows what number who, right. Right. who they that pumped number it up. belongs to. So taking his name off the back is, is not helping. Everybody still want that number eight jersey because of Lamar Jackson. And the thing is, they made a ton of money off of all those jerseys. And he didn't get not one cent. Mm. Yeah, I mean, that, that's, Chris Weber spoke about that back when they came out of school. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. So, and I think, man, this like I heard you what you said, Hig, about you. You're not afraid, and I'm I'm not either, especially about helping us. You know, uh, I think we have been taken advantage of, man, for a very long time. So if we can get a group of guys like me, yourself, and some other guys to you know stand up for what's right, in regards to us getting getting our jets due, I mean it's a lot of, and it might not be for us, but it's it's for the next generation of you know African American uh, basketball players coming up. Um, I I always said if not let's let's start something and say you know what instead of you going to these high majors, let's go to the HBCUs now. That's what I, that's what I said, man. Hey, let me said. hop in there on the HBCU thing. I went there, man. And it has to be an agreement once you go there. You know, coming from a big city, uh, we're not always accepted. And I'm going to just say that. I love it, man. I went to Jackson State. I was there. I was pretty damn good, too. But my game wasn't as welcome there because they had hometown boys. So I just want to let the HBCUs know that when you send a big city kid down there, I know you got your guys down there. But you know, we, you know, we come in there. We want to support the cause, and I hear a lot of guys say that. You know what I'm saying, fellas? Y'all mm-hmm. went high major, and you know that's what a lot of kids see: Louisville, yeah, but, but Illinois, Rob, Michigan. But Rob, but Rob, I'm talking about the your your elite, your McDonald All Americans going to those schools. Guess what? That's going to bring. That's going to bring attention. That's going to bring money because you know those those teams going to be on TV immediately. You know, you get two or three top five guys going to one HBCU school. Immediately, they're going to get detention. Immediately, the dollar's going to start pouring in. I think, man, we should. It comes to them creating relationships with you guys like that, though, Lib. You know what I'm saying? You know, I'm serious. But they don't have the budget. They don't have the budget to to make it happen like, you know, the prestigious white colleges do. Right. You know, 
don't. So yeah, we just got to right. we got to figure right. it out. Go ahead, well, Sean. You, you, see, say you, you see, you see, Mo Williams just got the job at Alabama State. And that kid uh, signed with him. He got a four or five star kid to sign with him down there. See there? That's love. And I reached out to him and sent my son that we want to go to the HBCU. Shout yeah. out, baby. I love the HBC. I went to Jackson State. Great situation. And, 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 and you know what's going to happen, man? They'll start changing the bid, the, 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 the Blue Bloods and the NCAA. They'll start changing their policies. If the top players start going to the uh, HBCUs, they'll start changing their policies, man. You know, it's the same. It's the same with uh, boycotting these businesses, discriminating. You know, discriminatory towards black folks and minorities. You stop spending your money with them, they'll start changing their attitude. Well, Hig, it was just like it was just like back in the day with the ABA. The ABA was flashy. You know, the NBA was like, shoot, we want some of those. We got, we got, we got to make it happen over here. Yeah, that's mm-hmm. right, man. My old man played in the ABA, and he was telling me all kind of stories back then how the NBA was, you know, envious of the ABA because of the type of excitement and entertainment they brought to the games. The NBA was bland back then, and the ABA yeah. had that play. Yeah. But they came and offered them guys in the ABA that bag, didn't they? They came and got <laughs> Dr. J and all that. Like, like, Doc, like, hey, man, I love this, man. Don't get me wrong. Man. Yeah, I think <laughs> man, too. Yeah, they went and got him. I mean, Daryl Dawkins, everybody, man. And I want to just go real back real quick to that, what you were saying to HBCU. You know, if the HBCUs really made a strong commitment, man, I believe they can get guys like you guys, man. But, you know, I just think that they don't have the reach to go out and reach, to, reach out to you guys because a lot of these big institutions, they come and sell that bill of goods. And in reality, all you want to do is play ball, right, LeBron? Right, right, Sean? Right, right, Lynn? Because y'all was killers. You could have, y'all could have went to HBCU and went to the tournament, no question, right? And I, I, I thought about going to HBCU, man, back in the day, and like my thing too was, you know, I want what made me. It was hard back then, man, because the HBCU they they ain't even put their tournament on TV. At least they get their tournament mm. put on television now. Right, yeah. right, yeah. You know yeah. What I mean? that- and so. So I wanted to be on television. I wanted to be on Big Monday, man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, that was one of the reasons why. That was another one of the reasons why I chose Louisville because they was on TV every weekend. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Every weekend. That's Saturday or Sunday. Y'all got that's why prime time. I, that's Louisville why I was a squad, uh, though, man. Louisville, Louisville, man, back in the day with Billy Thompson and Milt Wagner, all those cats, <laughs> Mm, Girl, Griffin catching alley oop backwards on the break, man. Oh man! man. Hey, 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 Liv! Oh, uh-huh. Mr. Bradford, did you play in the Dapper Dan game with us? No. Oh, I Liv, you, play, you played in the Dapper Dan game with me, right? We yeah. Yeah. Remember that dunk I did in the dunk contest while I grabbed the rim? Uh huh. <laughs> I, I stole that dunk from Daryl Griffin. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Dr. Hey, 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 what about your boy though, man? Uh B dub, man, when he had us come out there. <laughs> hey, that B dub, rest in peace, man. That's my dude, man. But Brian, Brian was different, man. Listen, Brian, Brian, he, he had us come out there, man, to stand. He wanted us to, to, to stand for us. He could jump over us, man. And, and he just ran us. He just ran us over. <laughs> <laughs> wow! But you know, you know, Brian. Let me tell you a story about Brian Williams, man. Or Bison Della. He changed. His name. Yeah, yeah. The season was over. You know, Brian was my rivalry in high school. I don't know who, who was your rivalry in Chicago, living in the city. Man, it, huh? everybody would have to say Simeon. You know, high school or. Or, well, who, you know, player, what play, there was there was nobody for live in eighty seven. No, in eighty seven oh, okay. it was yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so so it was me and Brian Williams. We went head up. We we that was my rivalry, uh, him and Stevie Thompson. That's why mm. I used to go head up with all the time. Mm. And so, just keep Stevie out of the paint. Yeah, just keep him out the paint, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, hey, I got some funny stories about those two guys. But look, Brian, back to Brian Williams, man. We went up there to school to hoop one day, man, during the offseason. They had an open gym. I went up there because I wanted to get at it. And so I said, uh, I said, B-Dub, where you going? You ain't going to stay to hoop? 
He said, nah, man, I got to get to the house, man. I left my cat in the refrigerator. I said, what you mean the cat in the refrigerator for? He said, my mother just bought some new furniture and he not declawed yet, so I didn't put it in the <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, I can't believe that one, man. <laughs> hey, man. I'm telling you. I believe it. I mean, yeah, I said, look, look I, I never lie on the dead, man. <laughs> oh. oh, man. Oh, man, that's too funny. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so, hey, so, Liv, you know, you know how I used to crank call you back in the day? Uh, uh, tell, uh, tell that story. <laughs> so I used, to, I used to crank call Liv, you know, because I watched The Greatest, and I seen Muhammad Ali do it to Sonny Liston. <laughs> Sonny Liston was a heavyweight champion. Lee was the number one player of the nation. So I was trying to get in his head before BC camp. <laughs> he did. He, he, he literally called me, man. He literally called me. Now he, every time I called him, he knew it was me. He said, I know it's you. <laughs> <laughs> and, so, and so, look, I did Stevie Thompson like that. I crank called Stevie Thompson, right? And you know, the cats know my voice. I try to disguise my voice. I can't disguise my voice, man. Right. And so... And so I called Stevie Thompson and told him, told him he was weak, this, that, and the other. I tried to act like I was a fan. I was like, Sean Higgins, the number one player, this, that, and the other. And so he, watch he, with he, you. He, he, he knew it was me. So, so Stevie out. Thompson, I'm going to be able to just do it tomorrow. We're going to see what it is. So, so Stevie, came, Stevie came up to, uh, up to Fairfax the next day, man. He wasn't playing. You know, he lived in the South Central. That's about a 45-minute drive, man. So Stevie came up to the little spring league. We sit in the gym, and they came and they said, man, Stevie Thompson outside looking for you. And you, hey, hey Liv, you went to Syracuse right on, on a recruit trip. Remember Bernie Fine? Yeah. Bernie Fine was at our gym that day recruit. And Stevie Thompson came up there. He had already signed with this my junior year. This is his senior year. He came up to Fairfax looking for me so we could play one-on-one. -on -one. We went out to the gym. Outside, it's a true story. Outside, I went out there. The whole gym came out there and watched us play one on one. I, we, back then, we used to go to play one on one by ones up to fifteen. Uh huh. Wow. Mm -hmm. I had him down. We didn't make it to fifteen. We played make it take. I had him down eleven to one. And I and I told him, I said, I said, I said, play my young boy Chris. You, you're not ready. For I said, play Chris. Chris beat him fifteen to fourteen. What? <laughs> That, and, and we and, and Bernie Fine sat on his rental car. He couldn't talk to. Him. He was outside the gate on top of his rental car watching. That's a true story. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, he, he used to be lit, man, back in the day. Yeah, man. That's wow. what basketball really meant. Kids nowadays ain't like that. They they too friendly. They don't play one on one. They nope. they, they, they they go to the camps in the summer. Everybody friendly. You know, mm -hmm. I, I look my senior year. Look who my senior on my senior year. Look who was on our team in Nike camp. It was Alonzo Morning, Chris Jackson, my move, uh, uh, Wayne Sims from Louis, from Louis, uh, LSU, wow. Elliot Perry. Mm -hmm. uh, what's the guy that played in Kansas? The uh, the white guy that played played the McDonald's game with Murdoch, Murdoch, uh, Murdoch, Murdoch. Uh, yeah, Murdoch, mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. Matt Ox was on our team, Elliot Perry, Chris Jackson, Alonzo Morning. And listen, this is the reason why I'm telling you this story. Alonzo Morning that whole week, we ended up going 10 and 0. Alonzo Morning that whole week wanted to play Sean Kemp so bad. I mean, he was he was staring, he used to stare at him when he walked in the gym. He used to be staring at him. <laughs> really? I, I swear, Alonzo, he said, man, I want to get at him so bad because you know that was the number one and number two guy. Right. Oh, oh. The, 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 coming out of our press in 88. So, you know, oh. my point is telling you this story, man. Guys used to want to get at each other's head back in the day. Yeah. They wanted that number yeah. one spot. They yeah. wanted that number one spot. That's why I was that's why I was crank calling Lee. <laughs> <laughs> that's my dude, that boy. Hell no. Man, that's my dude. Oh man. Liv, you knew who you were. I'm late to the casket drop, Liv. 
Man, hey, Liv, no you knew it was him every time. Yeah, man, I knew it was him. <laughs> every time, every time. You hear the voice right now. You can't, you can't disguise that voice, man. Uh, hey, Sean, nah, you was man. calling him on the rotary phone, though, right? That bug with that yeah, delay. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah. With the, the long-ass cord. <laughs> <laughs> I hey hey he, 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 I had a long court. I used to stay right by the uh, right on the couch and sit on the arm of my couch. <laughs> And, and then once, once, once he detected it was me, we would start talking about whatever. That's how we yeah. got cool. I'm yeah. talking to him. I, I forgot how I got his phone number. Roger, I think Roger Montgomery gave it Roger to Roger Montgomery, yeah. That's yeah. how I got it. Yep, yeah. yep. Yeah. Hey, yeah. hey, hey, shout up that light, man. Let me call dude up, man. See what he <laughs> y'all. Yeah. But he, you, was in, you was in LA. But you was in LA. You was two hours behind him. Yeah, I, I look, I, I, I called him. And he look, I, sometimes his sister pick out the guy yep. Marcus. Yeah. <laughs> yep. Hey, LeBron, yep. have you ever prank call people? Nah. <laughs> nah. <laughs> Not yet. <laughs> Not yet. <laughs> Not yet. <laughs> you been tell me you to get LJ back in the day? Uh, me and uh, me and LJ. He LJ was in Dallas. And my brother lived in Dallas, and man, we uh, I would always go over and, and stay with my brother and LJ. Would I would meet LJ, and man, LJ took me down in the hood. I was like, oh my god, man. Wow. It's like man, what's why you got me at? I'm from a little small town, man. I wasn't used to that. Right. But I would always go hoop, hoop with LJ, and uh, Mark Aguirre come in. The, in the gym with two big old rock wallers and stuff, man. It had everybody scared. I mean, it was crazy. We was Mark in this used little to come in there and wear y'all out? Oh. I was like, I don't know how the hell he getting this shit off. He was getting buckets. <laughs> he, put that big, he put that big ass on you. It's over. <laughs> it's over. Draws. Yeah, yep. Hey, uh, Mark Brown was cold at DePaul, though, wasn't he? Yeah, man. Yeah, man, that 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 guy had a lot of people wanting to go to DePaul, man. Uh, yeah, Mark yeah. Aguirre did. That, yeah. that motherfucker was cold in that gym that day when I saw him. <laughs> <laughs> he was putting up buckets. But, but LeBradford, you know what, though? His number's not retired with the Mavericks. Wow. They're not? No. Wow. His number not retired. Hey he, should be, hey, he should be in the Hall of Fame, too. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. No question. Yeah. So, no so, question. Man. It's it's crazy, man, just to hear stuff like that. And I'm at people telling me that Mark Aguirre's number's not retired, you know, with the Mavericks. And he he put up a lot of numbers, man. He you know, so mm -hmm. this politic thing is crazy, man. It, it's really, it really it really is, man. You know. And I and I just, him and go ahead. Him and uh Adrian Dantley for a small small forwards, they used to give they used to give people buckets. So, so Higgin, who was your guy? Like, who did you look up to? I know Magic was one of them, and I, I want to say the Ice Man, right? But, but yeah, who was that? that? Was your two guys? Those are my two guys, man. I used to, I used to write on my T-shirt now, a little at the park, Irvin Gurr. <laughs> <laughs> Irvin Gurr, they were both of them. <laughs> hey, hey, hey. You couldn't tell me I wasn't George Gerber when I was young, man. Please. Wow. I, used to, I used to run with my thumbs up and everything. Yeah, I remember that. <laughs> <laughs> I, I remember that. I remember that. Wow. Uh, you said you used to run with your thumbs up? Yeah, I run with my thumbs up, man. I was an ice man. <laughs> Man, wasn't Ice wasn't, wasn't Ice so cool with it though, man? That dude was real cool with it, man. It's smooth. Ice, you, Ice, you man. Said, you said we talk basketball with Ice, man. He make him want to go out and play basketball in the middle of the night. <laughs> yeah, yeah, man. You, he was like, "Young fella, you let me." You know, you know how he talk, Lee. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what you say, LeBron? I mean, you watch Ice play, and you be like, man, Ice didn't do that much tonight. And you look at the score. I mean, you look at the box score. He done gave somebody 32, 34. Yeah. Like, where, where did that come from? Hey, hey, LeBron, but you know what's so cold about what you're saying, man? When I was a kid, man, I used to be mad as hell at Ice, man, because every time he would come on national TV, he had like 25, 26. 
But then mm-hmm. when they wasn't on TV, you look at the paper in the box, well, Ice got 45, 50. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yep. And, and don't mention, don't forget to mention, we had to watch them games on replay at 10 30 at night. Oh, back yeah, in the day. Yeah. People yeah. don't even know that, man. Uh-uh, yeah. You had to wait for the replay. You had to wait for the mm-hmm. replay. Yeah, man, we were blessed, though. Uh, uh, do we have any uh, comments, Rob, on your end? Man, these comments are going crazy over here, man. But I mean, but they talking about it's real. So let hold on. I want to. Uh, yeah, try to get to somebody. Somebody said Milt, Milt Wagner was my dude in Louisville. Uh, he had a burner. Uh, let me see. Somebody said, man, this is classic, fellas. So shout out to y'all coming on, Sean Higgins and LeBrapp, because. You know, we was all fans of you guys, and I'm still a fan of Liv and all you guys. So you, y'all you taking us inside y'all life, so appreciate it. Uh, man, I, I love your show, man. I check y'all out as much as I can, man, because I get notifications when uh, when Liv go live, so I always check y'all out. Right. Man. And Hig. you know, who, who don't want to talk basketball? Go ahead, Liv, I'm sorry. You no, know, no, I'm saying, Hig, you more than welcome, man. He, you come on anytime, dude, if you want to chop I it. like that show y'all did with the Irvish, man. That was cold right there. Yeah, man, them, them, them good people too, man. Good people. Yeah, I knew they dad, man. They dad, man. I met him in Nike camp, man. He was cool, real. Cool. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. He was real cool. I mean, uh, him and uh, Forrest Harris. Remember, met Forrest Harris. Oh man, you got to go to bed at night. <laughs> 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 yep, yep, yep. So they probably watching, man, right now and, and tuning in to us. But so, so now let's talk about, you know. Us going to, you know, college, you know, we talked a little bit with the Bradford, you know, uh, Sean, you went on to Michigan and we still was connected, you know, because we went to the Big Ten. Now, me and Sean still, you know, playing against each other. Um, and me and Sean used to always talk, man, about, you know, what we going to do. And, 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 and I remember at the one game in Michigan, Sean said, I'm leaving. And I said, I'm leaving, too. I remember, that. I remember that. I, I hope y'all was coming to Louisville. <laughs> I hope y'all was coming hey, to Louisville, hey, oh, baby. Hey, you know what? That would have been when nasty. I sent out my letter from Timber UCLA, I almost signed with Louisville, man, because they knew I wanted to go to Michigan. They said if you go, if you go to Michigan, we find out any wrongdoings, we're gonna ban you from playing anywhere. And so I said, hey. I might stay neutral and go to Louisville. Right. But they had already signed the Bradford and Jerome Harmon, so I mean that ain't yeah. make no sense. Right, right. Right. Why not? You Sean Higg, man. <laughs> hey man, listen. I and w- once I got once I got up to Michigan, man, I saw that it was all good, man. So I went on ahead and stayed at the crib, man. You know, I'm originally from Michigan, but Louisville, okay. man, I, I, I had a I had a good time, you know, with Denny Crum, man, and you know, it, one of the reasons, I'm going to tell you this too, man, I keep it real. One of the reasons why I scratched Louisville off my list, I was hanging one night with the guys on my crew trip, and Jerome might remember this. He was in the van with us. Remember, your, uh, what's that, Robbie Valentine? Oh, my goodness. Robbie Valentine no was my host. And we he had a van. So it was me, Jerome, Purvis, Robbie, and there was one other player. I can't remember who it was. We was going to a party. And uh, we saw a white guy getting jumped by some, I mean, a black guy getting jumped by some white dudes out there on my recruiting trip. Wow. Ooh. And I said, man, stop the van, man. Let's go help him. He was getting, he was getting work. He was getting, I'm on the he phone. Was getting work on. And I yes. said, stop the van. Let's go help him. And they said, man, we can't do that down here. And they kept going. What? And that's why I didn't go to Louisville. Wow. Ah. That's a true story. Rome said that. I can't believe Jerome and Purvis. Jerome, Jerome was in the in the van, but he wasn't driving. But Robbie was driving. Yeah. Wow. That, hey, that's a that's another topic on another time. Oh, no, that's a total that's a totally another topic. But we in Louisville, Kentucky, back in 1986. Mm-hmm. No, he just Le Bradford. He just telling you that's one of the reasons why he didn't go. No. Now. <laughs> yeah. You know, yeah. you know, I, I, I'm from the city, man. You know. You know, it, 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 it's, di- it's different in the city than it is down in the country, man. That's all I can say. Yeah. I agree. I agree. Well, you ain't you ain't you ain't told no lies, big guy. Nah, man. You know, so you know, from, I know my personality. They they tore me up down there. Right. right. <laughs> nah, you'd have been good. 
<laughs> You'd have been good. I, I, I'd have stayed. On, I'd have stayed on campus. I wouldn't have never left campus. <laughs> no, you'd have been good. <laughs> hey, once they saw how you could shoot that jumper, they'd have been real good. You would have now, to. You come. know what? You got you got a point like that because I got drafted by San Antonio down there in Texas, and I got love down there in Texas because I was a spur. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. I used, to, I used to get pulled over by the police. They let me go. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> only thing in town. The Spurs are the only yep, thing in yep, town. Yep. Same, well, same with Louisville. The Cardinals are the biggest exactly. in town. Yep. But you could have went out. But, you I, hey, but I did like Louisville. The players were taking care of. Everybody had water beds in the dorm. <laughs> hey, <laughs> man. Hey, hey, <laughs> hey, hey, <laughs> hey, hey, <laughs> cut that out, man. Hey, 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 hey. Y'all was getting it like uh, that? Hey, man, I don't know what y'all are talking about. <laughs> <laughs> 18-year-old kid with a water bed. Hey, okay. man. Hey, hey, hey. It's 30 years later. It's all good. <laughs> you can say Muhammad Ali gave it to you. <laughs> For real. I just love that one. But but, but man, oh, how, man. I, mean, I just like reminiscing, man. I do, man. That's why we started this All Ball Chicago positive, man. We just we ain't on no crazy stuff, man. But we gonna, we want to keep it real, too. You know, but and I'm just happy to have you guys on, man. I, I really do appreciate you guys coming on, man. I wish I wish D Scott could have came on so we could really. I I just want to talk about that go go, man. I was telling uh, LeBradford that's all he used to talk about back when we in high school, man. We used to up yeah. in our camps. Go go, he used to hit that hit the beats and all the that. Bird. Yeah, yeah. Is that your daughter? Yes, that's <laughs> one of them. Hey, oh, you, you know, how you doing? Hello. Hey, hey, Sean, she another, I coached her team this year. And, yeah. Uh, uh, she uh, told the girl she was inbounding the ball. She said, uh, I'm going to pass it to you, but when we get down to the other end, you got to pass it back. <laughs> <laughs> she, she, uh, Our she, kind of player. I had That's to, right. She learned it early, man. That's right. Yeah, she she gets buckets. She <laughs> do not pass. That's what it is. Name of the game is put the ball in the basket, baby. That's right. <laughs> see, <laughs> and they, see, I don't yeah, even see. think they recruit the um, any defensive players in the NBA nowadays, are they? Mm, no, nah, not the way they play now. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I want to talk to y'all about too, Nick. Before we go, because I know we. How y'all feel about the game now, though? It's so free. Don't it feel like the park back in the 80s? Yeah, man. I mean, you can't touch anybody now, man. But, I mean, you know what? They made the game a lot more free-flowing free, free, free flowing for the fans. And, you know, you got to look at the NBA. The NBA is a business, man. It's a marketing machine. And so they got to make the adjustments to appeal to the market. And so right. the players and society change. So, and the players change. The mentalities change because society was sitting. Like I was saying earlier in the interview, man, and so you don't have the same type of players that you had back in the day, the bad boys, the New York Knicks, hand checking, mm -hmm. holding. You you had, you had if you go in that paint, that land of milk and honey, you had to be real about it. Mm -hmm. Right. And so these these kids nowadays growing up different, it's not their fault. They can't help when they were born. So the NBA right. had to make their adjustments. They had to open up the plus these kids nowadays bigger and stronger and more athletic than we were. Right. And so so you got to open up the game and change the game. So I think that's why you got guys like Joel and B shoot threes. You got the right. center not really obsolete now. He, the center is pretty much, you know, uh, a stretch four three. Yeah, stretch four exactly. And, right. and, and so it, it's it's entertainment, man. And, and, and then again, I heard that the NBA was, you know, they loosened the game up too. They was tired of all the kids seeing the fights back in the uh, early nineties. Oh uh, yep, right. wasn't good for business. Plus, they didn't want to see a game, uh, you know, 75 to 80. They want to see more of 115 right. to 105. They want right. those. Actually, kind of and and that's, that's really yep. low, too, LeBron, because, you know, uh, Steph Curry don't get in there with Houston. It's liable to be 144 to 145. You know what I'm saying? Yep. And, uh, I love it, every, though. Every other sport didn't, didn't jump on the wagon. Baseball, they juicing the ball, so it's more home run. Right. Yeah. They the juicing ball. the ball. Yeah, they making the ball. The pitchers are mad right now because uh, they juicing the ball, so the balls are travel far. Uh, so that's why you got you more. You play baseball in high school too. Yep. 
Yeah, I read that. You know, I, I, I used to read up on all the guys, man. I know all the young dudes. Good stuff, Sean. Good stuff, boy. Yeah, but that's – um, I agree with you guys, though, about the NBA. The NBA, when they started saying really – it's entertainment. They had to do this, man, because they were forking out so much money. So they had to get the people, the fans to come to watch these guys play. You know, it's exciting. Uh, so they was it was all about the paper, man. It's all about the money, man. And um, back in the day, you know, Michael Jordan was wasn't even the highest bet bas- basketball player when he was playing. You know, so it was it was more about let's get it in. Yeah. And, you know, the physicality and, and all that. And, and it's not like that anymore. Yeah. It's more entertainment, man. Well, you hey, know, Marcus. the game has always evolved. I mean, when it started, they had a dude up on the ladder. They had to get the ball out of the peach basket and throw it back. <laughs> That's right. Then, That's they right. Got, then, then somebody got innovative and cut a hole in it. <laughs> That's right. That's right. You know? so, so the game always been evolving. It's going to continue to evolve. Wow, they got they gonna end up having to raise the basket. These kids keep jumping out the gym like this. Uh-huh. <laughs> you ain't lying. <laughs> you ain't lying. <laughs> what was you about that, to say? That's my boy Zach Levine uh-huh. and, and, and Aaron Gordon, man. The stuff they was doing the dunk contest, man. Oh man. It's, it's Aaron sick. Gordon was robbed. Oh yeah, he was robbed twice. He yep. was robbed twice. <laughs> yeah. That's my that man. Dunk, man. So Bradford, you was a dunker, Liv, you was a dunker. What y'all think about that dunk he did when he had the uh the mannequin on on the on the little uh uh, 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 that was that was shit, man. That was sick. That was ridiculous. I mean, how did how did how did you come up with that? I mean, that, that right. I agree. That cre- that creativity, man, for them young these young guys, man, is off the charts. Hey, Liv, who who back in our day was three sixty from the free from the free throw line? Nobody. Nobody. <laughs> Nobody. Oh, man. I, I but can't do, do y'all find yourself watching? From, huh? I'm sorry, I often say, do y'all sometimes find yourself watching the game then and now like, damn, that was kind of lethargic back then. You know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> these guys, we was good, but watching these guys now, man, the pace is so crazy. It's dramatic. Yeah, yeah, man. They, uh, they, like I said, the game is wide open now, man. And, you know, guys guys can do what they want to do a lot easier than they could back in the day. Look, you ask, ask Liv and LeBron, they'll tell you, man, it was hard to get in that paint back in the day. Oh, oh. Yeah, man. Yeah. It was. I mean, know. I was I was I watching a, I was watching the thing, uh, Robert Parrish put a two-piece on Bill Lambert and didn't get kicked out of the game. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, man, they gave him a 10-game suspension now. Listen, listen, what about – they go one just as good as that, LeBradford. Uh, what about Cornwell, Mel, uh, Cornbread Maxwell leaving up in the stands? Now, he didn't get out of the game. He, he fought a fan and, and went back and finished the game. <laughs> 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 oh, man. Oh, man. See, we, I know I know we could talk all day and all night man we gonna do a part two lid uh I mean we could get them back on of course man but but I want I get 3d on here man yeah we gonna get 3d we gonna get them I know 3d probably got a little caught up on something but but let's talk <laughs> let's end on on this Sean you and LeBrad forgive give some of our listeners some drop some knowledge on them they might have a kid that want to get into the hoop on the hoop in the hoop scene uh, give them some, share some knowledge with them on, on how to go about it and what they need to do. Uh, my, my thing is, is, is you got to put the time in. I mean, it doesn't, it doesn't matter if it's you working at Kroger, you working at uh, anywhere you work at, you got to put the time in. And they, I call the kids now Google because they want everything quick. Mm. And you gotta you gotta put the time in, and and they don't understand the waking up early in the morning, getting a mile and a half in, come back, get dressed, go to school, you know, and then before practice, putting up a hundred shots, then after practice, putting up a hundred makes, and then coming you know coming back home. They they don't see. It's all the stuff that you don't see. And a lot of these kids need, uh, they need people to verify what they're doing instead of, you know, it's the, it's the stuff that people don't see. Mm-hmm. And if I, I, when I tell other kids now, you know, it's just like uh, when I go get a golf lesson, 
you know, when I get finished with the golf lessons, I got to go over to the range and practice on this. You know, I can get all the lessons I want if I don't go work on my game. It was it was a waste of money. Mm-hmm. So, and the thing with us, the thing with us uh, is that, you know, it, you never see kids playing outside anymore or hooping. Right. I mean, go, go play pickup. You know, you might be a guard one game and might be a center the next game. So you're learning how to play all the positions because you never know. You might be the, the shortest on your team one time. You might be the tallest. You never know. But you just went out there and hoop. And it's like, it's kind of like uh, if you give a kid a PlayStation game with no instructions. If you come back within an hour or two, he'll be sitting there playing it because mm-hmm. he'll sit there and he'll figure it out. And that's the same way with, with basketball and sports. Mm-hmm. You got to get out there and do it, keep dribbling, and then you'll start figuring things out. That's what's up. That's what's up. That's good shit. All right, Hig. Well, I, I, I agree with everything the Bradford just said, man. I, I always tell these kids, I'm like, man, y'all waiting for the gym to open. The outside court is always open. And the thing about the outside court, man, there's two things with the outside court. Basketball is one of the few games you can play by yourself. And then the other part of that, too, if you get your boys together and you go outside and play on that asphalt, you're going to learn how to play the game the right way because you ain't going to be doing all that dribbling on that, on that ass while you ain't going to you going to have to pass, screen, cut. <laughs> mm-hmm. oh, and so, exactly. And so, and so that that's part of that. And then, like, you know, LeBron pretty much touched on you know, pretty much all of it, man. But what I'm going to add to what LeBron said, man, is I think that Guys should work on their game more so than playing all these AAU games and all this travel ball, man. These kids playing too many games and not learning how to play. And I tell them, I said, you going out there unprepared, man, trying to get some exposure, and you're just going to get exposed. Mm-hmm. Right? right. You know what I'm saying? Right. Instead of getting exposed, you're going to get exposed. You know, I run my player development co- and, uh, and exposure camps, man. And and I tell the kids at the camps, man, like, listen, you, like LeBrad said, you got to work on your game every day. We didn't have tra- – man, you have a trainer back in the day? No. You no know, trainers in the hood? Yeah, no trainer back in the day? No. Man, I got to call my trainer. First of all, my mother wasn't paying for a trainer. Right. Oh, Bingo. Right. You know, I had – I go get a magazine, books. I learn. I go to camp, learn. Older dudes in the park might give me some pointers. And I go work on what they taught. You know, I was a student at a game. You know, basketball is all about emulation, man. You can watch the stuff on TV. Like the rapper said, you give the guy some instructions on the Xbox, he's going to figure it out eventually. Mm-hmm. And so yeah. emulation and watching guys that's doing it before you, that's the instructions. Mm-hmm. Be a student of the game. Don't go. You watch these kids, how they play basketball. They play basketball the same way the video game is, fast. Yeah, right. You right. They don't play in gears. So like like George Gervin always tell me, man. Iceman said, "Young fella, slow is quick in this business." It is. Time. Yeah, these kids play the game now, just like the uh, video game. That's why you see these guys doing that layup. What they call it, the jelly jumping off the wrong leg. <laughs> yeah, like man, that's crazy. That's what the video game does, though. You're right, right. you're right, you're right. I get it all the time. It jumps off the wrong leg. It's a glitch in the game. The video game jump off the wrong leg, and that's what these kids do. Yeah. So, the, the, the Jelly Fam live, is it? Yep, that's it, the Jelly Fam. The jelly, whatever they call it, yeah, the Jelly. And so, and you look, look, we, we wasn't watching video games. We was watching Dr. J, Magic, Bird. We was watching real dudes. Right. right. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. Video games, they watching characters, man, and, 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 a, and, a, and a, a digital chip. Right, so Hig, so Hig, so, so Hig, tell tell some of our listeners, man, how they can get in touch with you, man, because we got some people on that West Coast that's that's following us too. Uh, so tell them how they can find you, man, so they can come, you know, come to some of your camps. Our website, man, we just launched a new website, nine star basketball dot net. Nine star basketball dot net is all spelled out. Nine star basketball dot net. All our right. campsite. It's nine star basketball camps.com. We had to postpone a lot of our stuff for the spring, man, because it's COVID 19. So we just wait for the NCAA to open up 
you know, the live period let us know what they're going to do. They got us locked down until June 30 before they make a decision on how they're going to expand. So right now what I'm doing, man, is focus on doing instructional videos. So now I can get the videos out there. Kids can watch them, you know, virtually. And like we just said, watch the videos, go to the park and work on your game. No doubt. And when you get it all open up, uh, Hig, I'm definitely going to come down there, man, and, and get with you on it too, man. So Yeah, hey, in yeah. L.A.? You're in LA? I'm in Vegas. Oh, you're in Vegas. Okay. Yeah. So, yeah. Live, so. live, 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 spend some time out here. Yeah. So, when I come, man, I'm, a, I'm definitely going to come get, I'm going to get up with you, man. We're going to do something together, man, too. Uh, we definitely, I talked to my brother, Glenn Rice, man. He's going to do some stuff with us, too. So, we should all get together and collaborate. No question, man. man. We have to, man. It's like, I don't, that's why I never understood, man, why, 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 you know, African American athletes, can't all, you know, get along and say, you know what, let's do something real special. You know, you know what I think it is, Liv? I think I think what it is, man, it's not so much I think about us not getting along. Uh -huh. I think what it is, man, because of that competitive nature when we play, you know, guys haven't learned how to unleash that. Right. Mm -hmm. You know, after you get done playing, man, you know, transitioning and just being a normal guy, man, and then you look it's at the hard. guy. It's hard, man. A guy that might have been your rival or was on another team, you didn't really know him that well. It, it's hard to communicate with a guy that you don't know. But at the end of the day, man, you got to lift that hat, man, and go just give homage. You got to pay homage, be humble, pay homage to your guys, man. And, you know, because we had our time against each other. That competitive nature is over with now. It's all love now. It's, it's okay. real, man. That's real. And L.A., you come too, man. That's real, man. Oh, no question. I'm bringing my clubs yeah, with sure. me, though. And we need to come down there to Texas, man. There's some ballers down there in Texas. We need to come down there and get them some exposure. I know they got organizations down well, there. Well, he he in Kentucky now. He's still in Kentucky. Oh, he's still in Kentucky. Okay. Yeah. That's yeah. You just uh, actually, uh, Lib, give everybody my number. and uh, Because uh, I'm always up in uh, L.A. You know, my, my brother-in-law is one of the assistants at uh, UCLA. So I'm always the basketball there. coach. Yeah, man, I got two sons go to school down there, man. Let us get a workout, <laughs> man. I got UCLA? sons that's killer, man. Hey, yeah, you said like, man. Hey, no, he ain't, a, he ain't at UCLA, dog. He down there. He had a JUCO, right? Yeah, the JUCO, man. He's six four. Let, oh, we don't need don't don't promise us nothing. Let, just get him in the gym with them boys, man. I guarantee you, wear him out. All right, and that's on Shot Town, baby. <laughs> get, get, with, get with Rico Hines. Rico Hines uh, run the runs up there at UCLA in the summer. Rico Hines, Baron Davis boy. Man, please plug uh, my boy. My son Colin, six four man, and he a game buddy. Anybody down there buckets? Uh, he, right. he, he, he got out, hey, man. Lil, but you know, no arrogance, pass, man. He, he he come to play, man. Pass them numbers around so we can stay in touch, man. Yeah, I got you, man. I got you. I got you, man. Well. Bob, it's time for us to end the show, man. And uh, <sighs> it's been a great one, man. Another good one. And uh, we're going to put this on our podcast, guys. So I'll sh I'll send you guys the link, too, man. You can share it and all that on on your page and, and, and whatnot. And, and we're just going to keep this thing moving, man. We just started it. And we we trying to, you know, enlighten, you know, our listeners, man, on what it takes, you know, to be successful, whether that's in basketball, in real life, uh in in the field working field because we all had to make that transition we did you know we're not playing basketball no more but sean you an entrepreneur i'm an entrepreneur la you an entrepreneur we all you know played our game and did it the right way and now it's time to give back man let's give back to the young generation and, and let them know that we do care and it is hope man even though we, they're going through some things right now uh this too shall pass man Yes, sir. Wise words and well said. Yes, sir. Man, I, I just want to say thanks for letting me ride along with y'all, man, through this journey. Uh, 1987, McDonald All-American guys up in here. Sean Higgins, the Bradford Smith, my man Marcus Liberty. We all on ball Chicago, baby. <laughs> he, over there looking like, here, like, man. he over there looking like Ray Charles, right? <laughs> Hey, 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 I got the green light from Liv. I said, Liv, can I wear the shades tonight? He said, man, you good, man. <laughs> uh, hey, 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 Robbie, hey, Robbie, man, you keep it lit on the show, man. 
Liv played a serious role. Y'all, the dynamic duo. Man. Yep. Thanks, man. Mm -hmm. Thanks, man. Hey, I have to ask Liv, can I clown the night, man? <laughs> That's my man. That's big fella. Hey, Liv, Liv got some comedic uh, uh, skills in him, too, man. He's trying to keep the smooth right now. <laughs> yep. Got to. Got to. Got to. Yes, All right, uh, man. Well, we appreciate y'all right. coming on All Ball Chicago Believe Podcast Network, man. Y'all come back again, fellas. Man, love All you guys, right. Appreciate man. it. All right, we yeah. about right. it. Much love. All right, Later. Peace. No. All right, All right. All right. I get them numbers. I get them numbers too. All right. All right. Yeah, man, that was another good one, man. Another good one. Uh, Thanks, man. big fella, for letting yeah. me ride with y'all. I felt like I was on the McDonald's team tonight. <laughs> <laughs> man, I was feeling like this. Man, figure bros, baby. <laughs> you know, me and Hig, man, like it's genuine love, man, between me and Hig. I mean, LeBradford, we haven't kept, I haven't kept in contact with like I do Hig, but now since I got his, you know, information, I'm gonna keep in contact with him. But me and Hig go way back, man, and that's my brother, you know, and 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 whatever. Right. Whether or not you wanted it to to be a knot, he was stalking you. Yeah. <laughs> he, he, he was straight calling you. I like, hey, hey, boy, that boy kept it so one hundred. Shout out to Sean Higgins, man. And he's he's Dad always Bradford. he's always been like that, though, man. Higgins always been like that. Derek Coleman's another one. See, you know, they 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 keep it real, man, one hundred, and that's what you know. I don't want anybody to be fake, you know. I want you to be who you are, you know. And that's why the guests that we have on, we don't prep them for what we gonna say or anything like that. Nope. Uh, Ronnie Lester was on, and he 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 was just talking, you know. We was asking questions, and he was flowing with it. So I just want them to be them, man, you know. And so many times, you know, us athletes, we get so uptight, you know, especially when we get interviewed by unfamiliar people. We're, we're afraid to really let them in, so we don't open up as much. So that's what I wanted all Ball Chicago to be, you know, open up a little bit, positive. Um, if you have some things that you was going through in your life, you can share those if you like. If not, it's cool. Uh, but that's what we all about on All Ball Chicago, man. Yes, sir, man. It, it's been real, and it's been look, fun. Look, you about to see? And it's been real fun. <laughs> and despite all the things that's going on around the world, uh, my man, Marcus Libby, myself, we're very conscious of it. You know, we're praying for the families. Everybody stay strong. Be be resilient. And, and pay attention to your surroundings, man. All Boss of Chicago, Lee Podcast Network, Bobby Reed, your host, Marcus Libby. What we finna be on, big fella? Yeah, I want to say one more thing before we go, Bob, and then I'll unlace it. Go for it. Yeah, man, it, it is. It's very important, man, that 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 we 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 understand what's going on in our country and um, black lives do matter. You know, and I want people to understand, you know, brown matters, black matters. So we have to all, you know, understand what really is at stake right here, man. This is huge right now because we are losing a lot of us, you know, to senseless brutality by the policemen. So we need to let our voices be heard, but we need to continue that. We don't need to stop it. We need to continue that. So whatever we need to do, whether that's us bringing on people and we talking in All Ball Chicago about, you know, some of the things that's going on, enlighten and try to get out because we do have to rebuild our communities, man, because they're definitely being burnt down. We're going to have to find a way to rebuild our communities. You know what? I'll keep my sarcastic comment away from this platform. from Because y'all that burnt it down need to be rebuilding it. No, I'm just kidding. Shout out to all of y'all out there in Chicago, man. Let's stick together uh, around the world. I, I, I don't have anything else, man. I, I, I'm hurt. All right, man. man. Love you, Marcus. Liberty, man. Love, Love what you're doing, man. You're a positive brother. Stay strong, big guys. No doubt, man. It's time for me to unlace the shoes, man. I'll start the beast, baby. We out of here. Peace. Peace.